What's up? My name is Eric Butler. This channel is called Report and Opine. I am back. And from the Huffington Post, or Huff Post as it's now known, as the cool kids might say, I suppose, Taylor Swift is apparently dating an alleged oasist and is now using a black woman to cover her ass. Her remix of Karma with Bronx rapper Ice Spice reeks of damage control and exploitative PR strategy. So as far as I can tell from here, it looks like one establishment hack shell white woman is calling another establishment hack shell white woman a racist. And the title is already littered with weasel words. So apparently she's dating. You can't even prove that. And the man is allegedly a racist, which of course you can't prove that. And you think that she's using a black woman to save her ass. You can't prove that either. So it's all completely fake, but I don't know what else we might expect from the Huffington Post. And I actually do love this story. While I don't care for Taylor Swift at all, I think she is a mildly talented establishment hack shill loser. Well, I guess she's not a loser. She's wildly rich and famous, so she's, did, she's done something right. But with all that said, in this particular case, I guess I'm going to have to defend her. Most people know I'm a huge Ye fan, and obviously I, I've never... I. I I've never actually listened to a Taylor Swift song. I guess if one came on the radio, I could probably identify it. But I think it's a pretty well-known fact that even without the whole Kanye West stuff, I'm clearly not her market, okay? So as much as I don't really care for this woman, here I am defending her, sort of like I did when I had no choice but to defend Don Lemon, which is a completely different story. And the question I have here is, what talking point did she miss? Because as we know, you can pair it 99 out of 100 talking points, but if you miss that one, they will still throw you under the bus. And who is this article actually targeting, right? So what point, what, what agenda, what agenda narrative did she miss and who are they targeting with this, right? I guess those are my main questions. And are we really at the point where the Huffington Post or Huff Post is mad now at Taylor Swift because she might be dating a guy that they don't like because he made a bad joke on a podcast, I guess that's actually where we're at. And as far as who this is for or who this is targeting, does anybody on planet Earth really think that a, a Huffington Post hit piece on Taylor Swift is going to convince even one of her worldwide fans that they shouldn't buy her album or that they shouldn't listen to her anymore? Do you think they're going to turn off one Swifty? Or is it more likely that anybody reading this who actually likes Taylor Swift is going to turn on you, HuffPost, as they should, as most Americans, as most people in the entire world should, because we all know by now that the media has done nothing but lie to us for, I, I mean, provably the last handful of years, but I'm sure it's been going on much longer than that. And on top of all that, they are also, not only is she a racist, but she is a racist because of somebody who they think they're dating. They think she's dating. I mean, this is, this is all so through the roof. It's very confusing. And that's why I love it, because I, I enjoy watching these people constantly eat their own, right? So as the cliff erodes, it will come for you too, right? So you can point the finger at the big, mean, scary, right-wing racist conservatives or whatever you want to call them. But just know that if you miss one talking point, they're coming for you too. And they're saying that she is now doing a song with a black rapper only because she was caught dating possibly this guy that they don't like. Are we to believe that this song that they worked on together just popped up simply to, to save her image from this guy that she may or may not even be dating? And while that's all happening... Taylor Swift, who is a huge worldwide pop star, is giving a platform to an up-and-coming pop star, however untalented both of them might be. You think they would be happy about that. And as far as I know, Ice Spice isn't mad about it. So why are these people so mad about it? And maybe this is apples to oranges, but it reminds me of the time when I believe it was Salon, another terrible commie, pinko, leftist rag decided that you can't say Latino or Latina anymore. You got to say Latinx or Latinx. I don't, nobody knows how to pronounce it. It's not even a real word. 
And then you fast forward a couple years and they said that that word was now offensive and you should go with Latin A. So no matter what happens, they administer these purity tests that obviously nobody can pass. So I've said all that without looking at the first paragraph of the article. So let's see what HuffPost has to say about Taylor Swift's possible alleged racist boyfriend. And she's saying this in the first person, so this has to be some sort of opinion column. The, the Huffington Post would never put the word opinion on top of anything. I doubt it. But I was already pretty much done with Taylor Swift. So this is, what, what's this woman's name again? Cambria Roth. So this woman clearly has a personal bone to pick with Taylor Swift, as do I, but not because of some dude she may or may not be dating who may or may not have said a joke you don't like on a podcast. It's all absolutely ridiculous. Then she announced her new collaboration with Bronx rapper Ice Spice on a version of her song, Karma. And that was the nail in the coffin. This reeks of damage control and an exploitative PR strategy. Swift has drawn major backlash for reportedly dating Maddie Healy. Has she? Has she really drawn major backlash? Or is it a handful, a small handful of weirdo media publications that are mad at her for some strange reason? Do you think her fans are mad about this? I highly doubt it. Swift, okay, um, frontman of British pop rock group, the 1975. He was someone I really knew nothing about. That is until the couple was seen out and about, and I started learning more about how problematic he is. Uh, again, that's a weasel word, too. Problematic just means somebody who may or may not agree with every single little thing that I say. When I went to the Eras concert in Philadelphia a mere 11 days ago, I was already feeling gross about the two dating. I booed Healy... When opener Phoebe Bridges proudly announced him on the guitar during her set, a Swifty in front of me had the nerve to look back at me like I was the problematic one. Yeah, well, maybe you are. That, that never crosses these people's minds, that maybe they're the ones in the wrong, and that, they're, that, it's an acceptable, that it is acceptable for somebody to hold a different opinion than them. And, and she's, again, they constantly do this. They say the quiet part out loud, right? There was a story of a college girl who literally said, well, I went to this college class and I watched a couple of YouTube videos and then I realized I was trans, right? So for the longest time, not the longest time, a handful of years, people have been blaming colleges and calling them these weird little indoctrination centers. And then one woman, man, they, them, z, them, zer, whatever, says, yeah, it was the college class, right? So she's, I digress, that's a different story, of course, but this author is saying that Somebody looked at her at the Taylor Swift concert, even though she was at a concert for a woman that she already felt like she was done with and she had enough, but I guess she did it for the job. So someone at the concert gave her a look insinuating that maybe she was the problem and that doesn't even register with her. Of course, she's on her moral, she's in, on her moral high horse of I can do no wrong. All of my talking points, all of my thoughts, all of my agendas are undeniably the right thing. It's, it's, through the roof. And we're talking about Taylor Swift, right? We're not talking about some deep cut woman who nobody knows. We're not, we're not talking about some off the beaten path actress. We're talking about Taylor Swift. Why would the HuffPost go after Taylor Swift? It just doesn't make sense. And then for this author to say, well, obviously, obviously I'm right. And she doesn't even realize that there's another opinion out there. Moving on. Healy, Healy, being featured at the concert and given a platform felt off to me. I wondered why. Why are these two white women parading around this man who has made anti-Semitic, Islamophobic, misogynistic statements, even about Swift herself? He once said dating her would be emasculating. Okay, whatever. He said some things you don't like. But it's also funny how she says these two white women, uh, that's her. I mean, it's, it's a tiny little picture, but she doesn't look like a BIPOC to me. So, But that's how out of touch with reality these people are. The day after the concert, BuzzFeed dropped an article. Oh, BuzzFeed, yeah, but we really trust them. About Healy say, saying on a podcast that he gets off to black women being, quote, brutalized. Healy had also laughed along as the podcast host made racist comments about Ice Spice, joking about her being one of the Inuit Spice Girls, a chubby Chinese lady. 
Healy did apologize for offending Ice Spice, but failed to comment on anything else he had said on the podcast. So he goes on a podcast, arguably joking around with some other dudes, and he is just expected to apologize for that. Dude, you can say whatever it is you want. You can say mean things. You can say jokes. And these people just lose their minds and then are confused when somebody else looks at them like, why don't you just chill? I mean, this is this is a perfect like microcosm of what's actually happen, happening. These people, these establishment, media, political people, they never actually have to confront a reality outside of their bubble. And anybody who even gets close to it, if you try to poke a hole in it, they will shut you down and call you the bigot, not even realizing that they are in this sliver minority, right? They realize that they have these, you know, they have these amazing jobs where they, all they have to do is sit around at their house in their AC writing hit pieces about Taylor Swift of all people. So they realize that they are in a slim minority in that sense, but they don't realize that their opinions are also in that very slim minority. After a few days of silence from Swift, I officially put her on pause. Oh, you, you're going to cancel Taylor Swift. Okay. I stopped listening to her music, and I gave all of my friends whiplash by announcing that I was done with her. Then Swift doubled down on ignoring Healy's glaring flaws. What was she supposed to do? So Taylor Swift, a billionaire worldwide pop star, is supposed to take your advice. Why would she do that? She's clearly more successful than you writing hit pieces about pop stars and probably politicians from the comfort of your New York City condo, I assume. So you gave your friends whiplash, and Swift doubled down on ignoring what her alleged boyfriend may or may not have said on the podcast. She said that she's never been happier. And again, I don't trust Taylor Swift as far as I can throw her. She has an awful track record of dating terrible guys, so this shouldn't surprise anybody. But do I think he's a racist, and do I think that she should be blamed for what they're saying he did that was racist? Absolutely not. And there I am defending Taylor Swift, just like that. Neither Swift nor Healy has confirmed the dating rumors. <laughs> so you don't, you can't, you don't even know that they're dating and you're mad that you think she's dating somebody that you don't like. This is ridiculous. On Wednesday, she announced the remix with Ice Spice and I was flabbergasted. Swift is essentially using the woman who her supposed boyfriend mocked to see if, to, to say, quote, see, if Ice Spice doesn't think I'm bad and still wants to work with me, then it's all okay, right? You put your quote in quotes as though it was something that Ice Spice said. Swift is essentially using the woman, her supposed boyfriend, so you don't know if it's her boyfriend, mocked to say, quote, see, if Ice Spice doesn't think I'm bad and still wants to work with me, then it's all okay, right? So that's a quote that you made up. For her, that's like Adam Schiff tell, making up quotes, pretending that Donald Trump said that. It's like, dude, she didn't say that at all. You put that in her mouth. You can't confirm it's her, if that's her boyfriend. You can't confirm if he's actually a racist, which I doubt because most people aren't in this day and age. And they know that they will be burned at the stake if they actually do something that's racist. But that, of course, is a different story. And that, that only works in one direction also. We know that. I had a lot of questions. Did Ice Spice know Swift was dating Healy when they recorded? Would Ice drag Healy in a verse? What about the suspicious timing of the release amid all the backlash? The, you're the backlash. I mean, do you really think that all the rabbit T. Swift fans in, in the country, arguably in the whole world, are really mad about this? No, it's you. It's you that created this. Same thing with John Morant, and a lot of people don't like this opinion. But the media created the Ja Morant hysteria, right? A 23-year-old millionaire shows a gun on Instagram and they're all surprised. Yeah, okay, this is, that's what they do. He's listening to NBA Youngboy, who's made his name on violent rap. And you should not be surprised about this. So when everybody's up in arms, it's because you created it. And I feel like there's a number of other things that we've seen, most notably Donald Trump. And they say, well... All the chaos surrounding him, that chaos was created by you. He just said some true things that you didn't like, and then you were the ones that flew off the handle. And this is what happens with everything. Oh, this backlash. No, you created the backlash. Now, you know what backlash is real? Bud Light and Target, arguably. Different story. No, no fault to Ice for agreeing to a collaboration with a mainstream artist and boosting her profile either. Plus, 
as laymen, we don't know how record labels or individual artists broach these conversations. Though it is worth noting that it is stark difference from her past collaborators, Nicki Minaj, Pink Panthers, and Lil TJ. But this collaboration also gives Swift Swift's predominantly white female fandom an excuse to ignore all of her indiscretions and to continue to idolize her, despite the fact that a racist, deeply problematic man is still reportedly her boyfriend. Swift has no doubt pleased. Swift was no doubt pleased when I Spice retweeted the collaboration news and called her the sweetest person ever. So you're now mad that the woman she collaborated with is not mad. And you're mad that Taylor Swift is not mad that somebody that she may or may not even be dating said something on a podcast. And I guess this works because here I am talking about it and I, and I don't, I don't like Taylor Swift, but I feel it necessary to defend her, however talentless as she might be against these weirdo establishment hack shields who don't know what they're talking about. It's also a testament to the wealthy white womanhood. What? What does that even mean? Of course, the blame for Healy's words and actions lies with Healy himself, but the partner you choose is a rec reflection of your values, and Swift has deluded, deluded herself into believing that a few rainbow-coated performances make her an ally of all marginalized people. Yeah, of course, they're not marginalized. They are in complete control. Just ask the Los Angeles Dodgers. But that, of course, is a different story as well. Her performances are just that, performances. Oh, that's deep. That's deep. Yeah, she's a performer. She's an artist. That's what she does. They do not absolve Swift of her complicity in dating a man who props up discriminatory borderline. Borderline. So you don't know if they're dating, and it's borderline white supremacist. It's ridiculous. Data shows that while the pink pussy hat wearing white women may show up at protests and demonstrations, they often continue to vote in line with their white male husbands and partner, lest we forget how many white women. Okay. Now she goes into the Donald Trump stuff. This woman is completely delusional. And I guess that's what you have to be to get a job writing for Huff Post, right? I mean, even the AI isn't going to be this schizo about things that they just don't know. Fans have tried to put Swift's feet to the fire before, and she even showed in her Miss America documentary that her father and management team were afraid of her speaking out about form. See, exactly. So they were afraid of her speaking out about former President Donald Trump because you know you're going to alienate about half your fans, right? So you should probably stay out of it, especially considering you don't know what you're talking about. This author, nor Taylor Swift, they have no idea what they're talking about. But that's why I love it so much. It's like a race to the bottom. Maybe another apples to oranges comparison, but the teachers union out in New York during Rona, it was like Bill de Blasio, corrupt mayor, the most corrupt mayor in the country at the time, as before Eric Adams, I don't know, there's a battle between him and London Breed, but corrupt mayor versus corrupt teachers union that doesn't want to go back to work, right? So you have establishment hackshell white woman writing this article calling another establishment hackshell white woman who hates Donald Trump a racist. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. But that's why I love this story is because it's absolutely hilarious to watch these people eat their own and administer these purity tests that obviously nobody can pass. So shout out to Taylor Swift. Uh, I didn't really care for her. I like her now more only because she's become a target of the media, kind of like with John Morant. Didn't really care for him as, as a mildly, as a lukewarm Warriors fan. I wasn't a a supporter of John Morant, but when he becomes a target of the establishment, I feel like maybe he's actually doing something right. But I guess that's enough apples to oranges comparisons for one video. So I love this story. I love watching them eat their own. I will probably still never listen to a Taylor Swift record, but I do prefer her to this awful Huffington Post writer. Anyways, thank you for watching. Please like, comment, share, and of course, subscribe. Subscribe.